All right, hi everybody, welcome back. Ryan here once again. So uh, today we're gonna talk about the Freightliner Cascadias. Um, I know I talk about the Kenworths a lot, so we haven't talked about Cascadias. Um, some of, we see a lot of them here in the shop, so we're gonna talk about uh, some of the pros and cons and uh, go from there. All right guys, so first of all, if you're new to the channel, my name's Ryan, uh, we do trucking and fixing. Uh, I'm not so much trucking anymore. Um, I was an owner operator for several years. Um, I was a mechanic before that and kind of went mechanic, owner operator, back to mechanic and I always thought I hated turning wrenches but I actually just hated working for other people. So now I have my own business and um, we do YouTube videos, educational videos on uh, do it yourself, uh, truck repair if you're an owner operator and uh, we've got some older trucking business stuff as well. Uh, so again, guys, if you're new, check that stuff out. It might help you out. Okay, guys, so the Freightliner Cascadia. I don't talk about them a lot. Um, you guys know, those of you that do know me, um, I'm a Kenworth guy primarily. I do like Peterbilt's as well, um, but Peterbilt's a little bit too expensive for me, um, so that's why I kind of stuck with the Kenworth's uh, because I think they're both about the same quality in the, for the most part. I mean, uh, the Peterbilt's stuff do right a little bit better, but we're not talking about Peterbilt's and Kenworth's today. We're going to talk about Freightliner Cascadia's. Uh, so probably 50% of my business that comes in through my shop are Freightliner Cascadias, uh, either day cabs or uh, sleeper cabs as well. So most of those, uh, I do have a couple of them. I actually have one here today that has a uh, ISX-15 in it. Work on a lot of DD-15s. Don't see a whole lot of DD-13s. I think, in my opinion, the Freightliner Cascadia is like the Honda Civic of trucking. I mean, they used to be a little bit cheaper. I mean, they've came up, they've they've come up in price as with everything these days has. But they're a pretty reliable truck. They're really, I mean, for the most part, they're they're cheap to fix. I know with Detroit parts, just for an example, I got to do an oil pan gasket or seal on a uh, DD15 down here, probably starting on it tomorrow. The gasket's like 25 bucks, you know, versus a Cummins IS615. Uh, that gasket's like 250 these days. Hey guys. Let me help Ryan today to introduce our video sponsor, Amar Equipment Finance. Amar is the largest independent equipment finance provider serving small businesses nationwide. Are you in the market for purchasing a new or used truck or trailer? Amar can get you on the road with 100% financing if you have two years time in business and a good history of financing or leasing in the past 12 or more months. Their small business team is great. Ryan and I know them personally. You can apply today online through the link in the description below. Back to Ryan. Parts, they, they, it's, it's a lot of German engineering. Uh, everything, most of the stuff's coming out of Germany these days or over in Europe with, uh, with your Detroits. As you guys know, Daimler Benz is uh, who owns uh, Freightliner, Detroit, and uh, Allison as well. Uh, so there's a lot of that engineering over there, a lot of, a lot of simplicity for the most part. And, uh, and I've found with a lot, of, uh, a lot of Detroit parts these days are, a lot, are pretty well the cheapest there are on the market. As far as the DD1513 platform, they're relatively easy to work on. I mean, my only complaint with the Cascadia is that the engine's a little bit shoved underneath the cab. So when you get to the back of the engine, it can be a little bit trickier to work on stuff. And it was with everything, guys, most of the problems, I mean, the more major problems I see are with when you throw an automatic transmission, another control module in the mix. Um, so when you add another module, more wiring, another harness, sensors, and all that stuff, I think you're always just asking for more problems. So I mean, a DD15 with a 10 speed or a 13 speed behind it, I'm okay with that all day long. I don't have any problem with that. I think it's a, it's a good it's a good setup and a good platform. Um, but with everything, I don't like automatic transmissions. But that's a that's a topic for another another video. Everything's relatively easy to work on on the Cascadias. I found, in my opinion, the worst part of them is is the engine is a little the DD15s. Things do get a little bit kind of compacted and some stuff's kind of buried. I mean, you get over to that, that oil cooling module and everything and, and your filter housing oil or cooling module, they call it, on the driver's side of the engine. I mean, you kind of get down in there and everything gets a little bit buried, you know, so it can be a little tricky. Yeah, so the one kind of Achilles heel, which what you have with the DD-15s is that rocker box gasket. Uh, sometimes they'll start leaking and, and for you know a hundred dollar gasket roughly give or take it's been a while since I've done one I mean you got to pull the cam and everything else out of the top of the engine so it's about as bad as a, um, a, a front gear housing cover leaking on a ISX 15 where you got to pull all the gears off the front of the engine it's a, almost a 30 hour job to do that so they, they both kind of have their give and takes so of good things and bad things I mean everything 
it's not a cut and dry answer like, oh, this truck's got it's junk or whatever. I mean, yeah, there's faults with there's some faults with Kenworths, there's faults with Peterbilts, there's faults with Cummins, there's faults with Detroits and Freightliner and so on and so on. Um, but uh, in my opinion, like I said, I think the the Cascade is a pretty solid truck, pretty reliable, easy to work on. Like I said, my biggest complaint is probably when, once you throw an automatic transmission in there. Uh, that, that just kind of complicates things. All right guys, so that's pretty much it on this topic. Um, I just want to kind of keep this short and sweet. We can talk about different aspects of the truck and all that and you know, and go into detail. We could be here for 20 or 30 minutes, but we just want to kind of do a quick overview of our opinion on uh, the Freightliner Cascade and what we think about it. Uh, if there's any specifics you guys want to, do, to have us do a video or something on, we can get a little bit more in depth on certain topics. Uh, feel free to, to comment, send us an email, and uh, we'll do the best we can to elaborate on those topics. Pretty much with that, guys, that's pretty much it for today. Um, we appreciate all the support. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the bell for the updates and like the video as always. So we'll see you next time. And again, we appreciate all the support.